Hey, it's your girl, Nettie B. And it's Rima L. And you are tuned in to the Sugar and Spouse Podcast, where we'll discuss all the sugar, a.k.a. the tips and tricks to make your wedding planning journey a bit sweeter. And don't forget the spouse, which are ways to keep that spark alive before and after the I do's. We'll also highlight professional vendors. So without further ado, let's let's get get into it. it. Hey, what's up? Hey, nothing much, nothing much. Excited about today. Today's an interview episode. So you're getting into the know of some of these vendors out here this season. Yes, I'm really excited for you guys to have this conversation with Kizaya from the Keylook LLC. And as you can see, we're beat because she taught us how to do it. Definitely be the look on the lookout for that demo coming out soon. So that way, if you're a bride who just got mm-hmm. married on your honeymoon, maybe going to your bachelorette weekend and mm-hmm. need some makeup tips, definitely want to check that one out. And if you're like me, who doesn't know how to do makeup at all, trust me, this is perfect. You will be looking glowy and beat with no problem. (laughs) All right. So without any further ado, we're going to introduce the CEO of The Key Look. Hello, hello. (laughs) Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Oh, yes. we're so excited to talk to you. Your energy is infectious. I'm so excited to talk to y'all too. So let's get into it. So tell us what drew you into makeup. So I used to model. I was modeling when I was like 19 and my little sister did my makeup. And mm-hmm. I immediately like fell in love. I was like, and I used to watch her do her makeup all the time. Oh my God, you do so good. So my little sister was the one that was doing makeup at first. And then mm-hmm. she did my makeup, and I was like, this how people feel when they get their makeup done? <laughs> I, I, I could get with this. So from there, I started, um, I was modeling. I didn't get behind the camera until after I went to cosmetology school, uh, when I started mm-hmm. working for Sephora. So um, I, I knew I wanted to be in the industry in some way. I just didn't know how I wanted to be in the industry. I went from mm-hmm. thinking about just doing brows to like, I remember it was Brows by K. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then I went into, I wanted to do barbering. So I started working at a barber oh. shop in Bloomfield. Mm. And then I finally settled on makeup. And uh, the people from Sephora came to my school and they did like a presentation. And I was like, okay, like I want to do this. They talk about you move up in a company and all that, okay. So, so that's um, how I got into makeup. <laughs> so then, okay, so how did you transition into be- making your own business and um, like the origins of the key look? Oh, the key look was never really like planned per se. I started, I was just so tired. Like um, I had been freelancing for a while. I had joined like other bridal teams and I just couldn't find my place to like fit in. So mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? Since I can't find a place for me, I'm gonna create my own place. So, it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, and it was, it was, it used to just be very awkward. I would work for other mm-hmm. writing teams. Sometimes I'm the only black person in the room. Sometimes like it just feel like real uncomfortable or. It was just too much. So I was like, let me figure it out for myself. So I was working for Macy's and Herald Square for Benefit. And I remember one time I was just so fed up. I was like, I'm so tired of working here. I have no money. I had $300 in my pocket. (laughs) I was like, I told my boss, I was like, girl, I don't need this. I'm quitting. The whole time, I'm like, I'm on the phone with my mother. I'm like, I just told them that I'm about to quit. I just don't know what I'm about to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, my best friend, my best friend, Sheila, she passed away. But her daughter um, was real motivating for me. She used to be like, hey, you are the check. You can go out and make money. You can do this. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, you know what? Let me just put some money into myself. I put $25 on Thumbtack. And it just went up from there. I made $3,000 mm-hmm. that weekend. Ooh. I quit on July 11th. It was a Thursday. July 11th, 2019 was when I quit. Mm-hmm. That weekend, I had worked three weddings. A few people hit me up on Thumbtack because I just put myself out there, put my work out there. And they were like, yeah, like we need help with the wedding. Last minute, makeup artist canceled. Knowing me, I don't got nothing else to do. I'm on my way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that worked out well. <laughs> so yeah, like, and that's when I went in and um, I started freelancing for myself. Um, I was on Thumbtack and this lady, so I was just constantly freelancing the entire time. So from July till about February, 
Mm -hmm. we were sitting the entire time. And then this lady reached out to me and she wanted to book us for a gig. We needed to do 27 people in three hours. Now she Whoa. reached out to me. And I was like, I can make a little bag real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I was like, I ain't have the people. I was like, I'm about to find some people to help me work this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I was like, when I went through my contacts, I'm like, dang, who can I get to help me? I'm just asking people, like, oh, can you help me? Can you help me? I got you on my page. Do that. Ended up getting a gig together. That was our first gig for the Kila in Jersey City at the Hyatt, um, at the Hyatt uh, place. Wow. Oh yeah, and we had to do it. It was for a bat mitzvah. We had to work at 6 a.m. and we finished at 9 a.m. We did three, wow. 27 people in three hours. It was only four of us. Ooh. Me, two other girls, and then I had an assistant. And we Wow. Went, I was getting girls out the chair. It was, and so then from there, I was like, all right, like, this is about to be legit. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm about to start finding people to work for me. And then mm -hmm. I was like, what this? Look at that. So from <laughs> then until now, how big is the key look? Like how many um, makeup artists and oh what other God. things do you guys do? So it is 16 of us now all together, mm -hmm. including myself. It's 16 of us. And um, we just mainly focus on bridal. So we mainly, mainly focus on doing bridal hair and makeup. Um, mm -hmm. We service all skin tones and all hair types. So we do weaves, we do wigs, we do locks. Mm -hmm. um, we just do natural, uh, natural hair for C, for A, whatever. Um, and then we also deal with straight and wavy hair as well, styling it. Wow. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Literally, Literally, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, that is your original crew, or are you guys like just you know you changed as you went? Like this is the so, first... the three girls that I actually did the big the big with the first mm -hmm. gig, I I don't um talk to them at all. Mm -hmm. Um, and mm -hmm. then after that, what I did was because I had to find other people to hire. So mm -hmm. once they started like being a little iffy, and it wasn't organized, so I get it. Mm -hmm. Um. I was kind of just trying to figure it out. I was on a trial yeah. and error and I, I had expert help. I'm like, can this person help me? Can this person help me? I tried to do a lot of things and um, I just had to figure it out myself. So yeah. uh, I actually went to the old school that I used to go to, Empire. That's where I went to cosmetology mm -hmm. school. So mm -hmm. I went back there and I did a presentation um, and I was able to find more girls there. Mm -hmm. From there, I hired one of the girls who's still with me now. At least she's been with me basically since I started. So she's been with me since like April of 2020. At least she was the first one to start working with me. She was she was receptionist at the school when I went there to do my presentation. And we mm -hmm. kind of clicked and just she's been with me ever since. And then from there, um, I started to like other girls just started to reach out to me on, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like I would love to work with you. And I'm like, okay, real quick. I'm like, all right, cool. That's this and that. The pay, that's where we're gonna be at. When I hit you up, like, the, like that it was. And uh, from there, they just, the girls keep bringing me girls. They like, hey, I know somebody that wanna work with the team. And mm -hmm. people just like flood my emails and like flood me in the DMs. Like, yeah, we really wanna work with the key look. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's really amazing. And it sounds like everyone knows their stuff. It sounds like they're trained. You're going to mm -hmm. cosmetology schools and yes. doing presentations. That's amazing. Yeah. That yes. Amazing. So that was really fun. And it was, it was, I was I was happy to go back to school and be like, yeah, I want to do a presentation because when mm -hmm. I first, like when I, when I was trying to get the job for Sephora, like, mm -hmm. and it had been a lot, it had been a lot of people at that school just really like hating on me. They didn't want to see me go far at all mm. and um I had found out when I was working for Sephora that one of the teachers at the school told them not to hire me wow so I was like when I went back mm -hmm. I was like I definitely want to be want to go back to the school to give back and also tell my story because even though mm -hmm. not people don't want to see you get up but still get up that's right. <laughs> like, you yeah. can still go far. If somebody mm -hmm. trying to you, there's still other doors that's going to open for you. So when I went back to do my presentation, I just wanted to make sure that I was able to grab at least one person from the school to be able to motivate them and let them know, like, it's more to do out here. Like, this isn't just it. Like, mm -hmm. it's other stuff that's that you can do. That's amazing. And you're clearly living proof of that, that yes. you're going far <laughs> yes. and doing your thing. 
it's, yeah. it's been so fun. I can't even like really complain. For, I've had my moments <laughs> in the industry, but for the most part, it's been so, so fun. <laughs> it could be like when you talk about makeup and when you're doing makeup, you like have this glow and this is for you. It seems like you're really living your dream. And yeah. if something is for you, no matter what kind of hater, nothing that they say even matters. Yeah. Right, and I'm so happy you were able to go back and start on them. Did that teacher even <laughs> see you? Or that teacher oh, was probably was, at her. Oh, she was like, yeah. "Oh, like, what's the pay? Do they need to do a W two nine? I'm like, don't worry about it. Don't I worry, don't worry, sis. Turn it turning green. Yeah, like, I'm doing this, girl. <laughs> Look at me now. I made it, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that happened a lot in my life. A lot of people just like not, like I had to always just really believe in myself because it, like, and I had to always fuel myself because mm. it will always just be somebody like trying to get in my way or like you can't do what God's already doing for me. Like you can't do yeah. nothing. You can't mm-hmm. stop that. You yeah. already got a plan for me. You really just can't stop that. So yeah. it was real mm-hmm. refreshing to also just be able to go back to the school and just like tell that story. It's amazing. And it's like, you know, it seems like you've had a journey with makeup and with hair and now you have your own company. So we recently did um, an episode about trends. So mm-hmm. can you tell us, like, what are your favorite bridal beauty trends that's out there now or that um, might be coming up? So right now, I really like that everybody is loving this like a no makeup kind of look, like just mm-hmm. like an effortless look when it comes to, especially a wedding makeup. Yeah. I'm really feeling that. Very light on the eyes, super glowy, um, light contour and highlight. Just very, very natural and just giving more like you. Right. Like, I'm, that's that's like my favorite trend right now. When it comes to bridal hair, I um I really love low updos, mm-hmm. low messy updos with like the two pieces in the front. I think it's yeah. so, so cute. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, like that's been like, anytime a bride says they want that style, I'm, just, I'm going yeah. to be <laughs> like, <I'm about> to- <laughs> my super girl. Like, but yeah, like my tr- the trends of being natural and just being yourself to add a little extra, it's, that's my favorite right now. I, I loved when everybody was playing around with the colors and stuff, but I'm really feeling this. Like yeah. everybody wants to just be themselves. Just a little extra, a little enhancement. So yeah. that's been my favorite. <laughs> right? You can't go wrong with that. Just enhance it a bit. Yeah. yeah it's just a little bit. Like, you know, like, I love when people tell me, like, I want to still look like myself. Yes. So, hey. Yeah. And you're able to achieve that without them being like washed out or they're in the pictures, right? And they're because I yeah. hear most of the time they're like, you have to put all this extra makeup on for the photos, for the video. Oh, yes, but, some makeup artists do say that. Right? But um, I truly feel like it depends on the photographer um, and their style of doing photos mm-hmm. because I've done very, very light makeup on people and it showed up great in the photos. Um, I think that when it comes to lashes, I always feel like my, you should put some type of lash on. But other than that, you can go as light or as glam as you want to do for your makeup on your wedding day. Because it's still going to look nice in your photos. That's a good point. And it also that depends on the point. photographer. Some t- photographers use like filters on their photos, so something might not show up. Um, um, but just like, cheating. I would say check in the style of your photographer and see how they usually film. Um, how they take photos or how they do videography what helps because you really don't have to add that much Mm -hmm. okay so aside from our natural beauty brides and us giving that natural look have you ever gotten a crazy bridal look request from any brides um like a lot of color or like I guess something that when you heard it it was like "Hmm, all right that's different a little crazy well, probably not crazy, but um, I remember when I first started in the industry and I used to do a lot of Indian girls and they would love for me to go like a few shades lighter. And I'm like, girl, I'm not doing that. <laughs> 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 and lighter than their skin tone? Not yeah. <laughs> so like, this one girl that I did when I first started doing like mainly weddings, she was like, she wanted me to go to, she was like, she wasn't that light, but she 
she wanted like three shades lighter in her foundation. I was like, girl, I'm not doing that. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> this is still your brand. And you're going to. Oh, so and how, did you, how did you break it to her? Like, did she take it well? I straight up told her that I was not doing that. <laughs> you're welcome to do it yourself. <laughs> I was like, what I did try to do was just convince her. Like, I'm like, you know, like, you look great. It's skin tone is fine. Like, you look beautiful just the way that you are. So I yes. you know, just try to give her some encouragement about her skin tone and just let her know like she looked beautiful how she was and it would look mm-hmm. it would literally look crazy if I made you three <laughs> times lighter than than you actually are like it's, you're yeah. gonna look gray yeah. so I was like yeah I'm not doing that I was like, you look fine like that. Mm-hmm. And then you go and try to promote that wedding. They're like, oh, she didn't even tell them at her. Don't tell them it was me. Don't you even tag me. Mm-hmm. There are some towns like, where I'm just like, please don't tell them that you work with us. No. Take the credit. You did this yourself. Find somebody else. All right, so I guess the flip side to crazy, what about if you've had any kind of like memorable weddings or like behind mm-hmm. the scene wedding stories? I can't even lie. All of my weddings are any wedding that I've ever done always came with a story. I could literally point across this wall and tell you every bride that I did personally and mm-hmm. I could tell you their name and I could tell you when their wedding was and how much fun we had and things that we talked about. Everybody mm-hmm. on this wall got a story. Um, I've had the best moments in this industry. It's not even funny. Uh, yeah. I really did. I can't. I, I, a lot of the moments are so, so good. I'm like just looking at the wall, just like ready to point out a moment. <laughs> it's so good. Like all of them. I truly feel like we get the best brides. Mm-hmm. Like, they're all so amazing. They remind me of me a lot. We laugh. Mm-hmm. We tell stories. True. Sometimes we didn't cry. Oh. <laughs> we didn't pray. Like, yeah, it's like once once I got a connection with my bride, like mm-hmm. that's it. It's like yeah. real. and a lot of like all of these women, I still have most of them on Instagram where they always like still supporting our work, always tell people mm-hmm. about us. Mm-hmm. Um, always like you know they even follow my personal page too yeah. and i was like hey yeah, you so funny like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm they don't want to invite me to like family events later like oh well, yeah y'all family now it gets like real i've definitely built some amazing connections with all of these women oh, um, that's really sweet i'm not lying when i say we literally get the best brides like we get the best I take it having that connection must be really good too like for you and the bride to connect to that level and then Mm -hmm. doing something as personal as someone make up for their wedding day like it's the best from the moment we talk on the phone though we get that Mm -hmm. like um because Mm -hmm. how I'm talking to y'all right now this is literally how I talk with everybody (laughs) for no reason at all yeah like when I'm on a phone with them because the first thing that I do to make sure that we're a match and we're Mm-hmm. I talk to them over the phone. So sometimes I'm on the phone with some of these ladies for like an hour, 45 oh, wow. minutes. Sometimes over an hour. And we really just talking. Like we like the best. Yes, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's amazing. But it really is. Yeah, well, have you ever had one like that didn't match? And you're like, oh, I don't know about this bride. Yeah. Yeah, like that's that's a reason why I do the phone calls. Because I can already tell from the phone whether we going to match or not. Mm-hmm. I can already tell on that phone by the questions that you ask asking me, by the way that your tone is. Like, I already can tell, like, if we're vibing or not. And mm-hmm. from there, I make the decision, like, mm, like, maybe we'll work this one. Maybe we won't. I feel like it's something that I wouldn't want to work. I wouldn't ask anybody on my team to work it. Oh, okay, man. Yeah, that, that's valid. Yeah. Um, so I do want to also ask you, what is a secret that you can give to um, brides to help them ensure that their makeup and hair stay like flawless throughout the whole night? And even if it's like destination weddings or different climates or outdoor settings, what are some tips you can give for that? You're talking about like maybe products that they should bring or... I guess I keep it up after. Cause you what know, once I the makeup do... artist leaves, 
This is so me. what I would do as a bride is I would ask I would ask the makeup artist or the hairstylist about a touch up kit. But this mm-hmm. is typically what it looks like. A touch up kit. We put straws in here. We put blotting paper just in case you get oily tissues. We put a sponge. We put some Q-tips, some toothpicks, some lip wine. We put your lip. We put bobby pins, rubber bands, safety pins. We put all of that in this little bag, this little touch-up kit bag. That way, oh. when we walk away, we know that you got something. That's oh, it. There it I is. Love that. I love that. And yes. it's like a good, this like a good little add-on too. Like when brides hear that we get touch up kids, they're like, oh yes, like I'm gonna have my lip and everything with me in the day of. Mm-hmm, you know what mm-hmm. I usually do is leave it with the maid of honor or the most responsible bride. Being, and <laughs> they be good. Mm-hmm. I would say ask, I would say to brides, ask about a touch up kit. Why are they not offering no touch up kit? Mm-hmm. All of this money to get your hair and your makeup done, and then you walk away not not to give me no touch ups, and then you ain't gonna leave me. Mm-hmm. Talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm.